um, and do a live really quick and share with you uh, some of the things that the Spirit has been sharing with me and, um, and the, the different ways that the Spirit speaks to me. And one of the ways that he speaks to me is with um, a sledgehammer right in between the eyes. <laughs> and the other way, um, another one of the ways is he can be kind of quirky sometimes so that I know he's speaking to me. And um, one of the things that he's been leading me into the importance of lately is um, the importance of worship. And also he's been leading me also to um, Ezekiel, the verse Ezekiel 44, 4, which says, I looked and behold the glory and brilliance of the Lord filled the house of the Lord and I fell face downward. Well, I was saying to him last week, I said to him, uh, to Jesus, I said, well, I am ready for your face down glory. And his immediate response to me was, well, maybe you should fall on your face first. And I was, oh my goodness, uh, floored by that response that was the sledgehammer between the eyes type of response that I get from him every once in a while. You know, we think that we're waiting on him, but more often than not, he is waiting on us. And um, so what is, how do we usher in God's presence? We, one of the important ways of doing it is we worship him. And there are several verses that tell you how you do that, and I will paraphrase most of these. But the first verse I want to start with is it says in John 4, 23, that the hour is now coming and, and is now here when the true worship will, worshipers will worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking, he's looking for such people to worship him. He's seeking for his people to worship him. And... Um, there is Psalms 95, 6 that says, worship, bow down and kneel before the Lord. It's a posture. One of the things is it's how you come before him. In your posture, you bow, you kneel. Psalms 102 says, come before his presence. You come into his presence. You bring in his presence with singing. Um, Psalms 104 says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Again, so again, that's how you come into his presence, with praise and thanksgiving. Psalms 145.3 and 150 verse 2 says, to praise him for his greatness. Psalms 149.3 says, dance before him. David danced before him. Psalms 29.2 says, to worship the Lord in the beauty of his wholeness. And then one of the quirky ways that he spoke to me about worshiping him also last week was he said to me as I was still in bed before I got out of bed, he said, uh, worship is edible. I'm like, what does that mean? And then, of course, communion. It is one of the ways that we remember, we worship him. We come into remembrance for what he did for us at the cross by shedding his blood and giving his body for us for victory. To, so that we are blameless, we were out without sin, and we are transferred into his kingdom. We're to, to spend that time in intimacy with him, worshiping him and remembering him in communion. Um, come into his presence, with that's how we come into his presence, with thanksgiving, praise, singing, dancing, bowing down before him, kneeling before him, worshiping him, communing with him in communion, all ways to usher in his presence. I love one of the things that Derek Prince says, and that is that we should be in thanksgiving for his goodness, praise him for his greatness, and worship him for his holiness. That is beautiful. Um, and I'd like to end with Mary, what Mary did. Mary, if you remember um, the story in the Bible, when, when he was around visiting at their house, she immediately came to his feet. She came and stayed in his presence and listened to his every word, soaked in everything that he had to say, kneeling at his feet. And of course, this just drove Martha crazy because she was doing the actual, doing the complete opposite. She was getting bogged down by the, bogged down by the cares of this world, serving everything, that, all of the other things that take our focus away from him. We do those things first. 
We put more importance on those things and we don't come to his feet. We don't come into his presence like Mary did. Mary, what else did she do? She anointed, she broke uh, oil, precious oil, spikenard over his feet, anointing him, uh, bowing at his feet, cleansing his feet with her, with her hair. She knew what the importance was, that was being in his presence, worshiping him, coming to his feet, which we should all be taking that time to do. You want to see the Lord's presence? Come into his presence. Worship him. So I hope that you guys learned something from this today. You guys have a great Monday and a blessed week. And I'll see you again soon.